let's talk about some myths before we move on. So that we, one of my goals here is that we have really an accurate, uh, uh, broad, accurate foundation of information. First, if all we do is reform nonviolent drug policies, we'll empty our prisons. Wrong, factually wrong. The majority of people in Wisconsin's prisons did not commit a drug crime. Second is that it's all the Department of Corrections' fault. And I really should say it's like half their fault. I'm gonna pick on them in a little bit about how they make their decisions to revoke people from extended supervision, but largely in the state of Wisconsin, the Department of Corrections does not have discretion. Because of truth in sentencing, which was passed at the end of the 1990s, if the Department of Corrections receives an inmate on a two-year sentence, they do not have an option but to house that person for two years, with some very small exceptions. And the last is that our prison population, this is a myth, that crime is out of control and it's at the highest rate it's ever been and that's why our prison population is so high. That's wrong. We've had spikes of violent crime in the city of Milwaukee, but overall our crime rate today is far less than it was in the 1990s. And nationally, is this the trend of the, of the crime rate is going down. So uh, I had a number of the members of the Department of Corrections in the audience when I first presented this, so maybe I was trying to you know, warm up half of the crowd so they weren't super mad at me, but there are a couple of things that the Wisconsin DOC does well, and, and I want to acknowledge good behavior when it happens. First, they are working to, to improve their reentry programs. Windows to Work, the ORS program are receiving more attention and more funding. Second is an increased use and reliance on evidence-based risk assessments like the COMPASS exam to try to make more informed decisions for those discretionary actor, actors. And then finally, in Wisconsin, we have pretty good access to data. And I'm gonna talk about the data now. So uh, this next slide, this is the DOC's homepage on the left, pretty nice. On the right is a tab called Data and Reports. And so, uh, you can go on your phone right now and go to this website and pull up the data and reports page and you'll be able to in that second gray bar, I know it's hard for you to see, but that second gray bar every single Friday, the Department of Corrections counts everybody in the system that's in prison and they publish it every Monday. So we can track on a weekly basis what the population looks like, both men, women, adults, juveniles and by institution. And so if you were to click on that data and reports page, you would see something like this, which is uh, illegible. If we were to focus in on the important information, it would look like this. And this is from uh, the most recent report, which I believe was a week ago Friday. So a couple of things to pause on this slide. Design capacity means what it says. What are our prisons built to hold? Total population means what it says. That means how many men and women are actually in the prisons in the state of Wisconsin. So you can see that we are overcrowded. This is about 140% capacity. How do you get to 140%? You double up. A cell built for one has two. A cell built for two maybe has three. Uh, at Teichita, the women's prison, uh, we've heard stories of rooms with six, eight, or ten women, some sleeping on inflatable mattresses on the ground. So what I want to focus on here is not that problem, that's bad, that's bad enough, but right here, this number, four, five, three. That number represents the number of contract beds that state inmates are serving their state sentence in a county jail. So the Department of Corrections contracts with counties to house overflow prisoners. And we have 453 state inmates serving their state sentence in county jails. Now let's back up. The title of the presentation is Inmate 501. That number comes from the fact that there are only a total of 500 contract beds available to the Department of Corrections statewide. And we're almost at that point. 47 more spots. The 48th new prisoner is inmate number 501. So when I talk about there being a crisis in overcrowding, we're right there, we're on the cliff, about to send somebody out of state or build a new prison. This number, 453, is what, I, I, what I'm tracking on a weekly basis. 
So if we go back two years, and, and all I did was pull the Department of Corrections data each week. So in January of 2016, we had about 55 inmates in county jails. And look at the trend line. Every week, every month, more are added. And now we're at that 453 mark. One of the major changes in state law took place uh, and kicked in in uh, January, which was a change to the mandatory minimum uh, uh, sentences for repeat drunk drivers. And so we're seeing this uh, steep increase of inmates, except for around the holiday season. Uh, I see that there are a number of judges in the room. Normally their courts are down in December around the holidays, so I think we're going to see that line spike right back up. And I'm not alone in thinking this. So for, first of all, this isn't an argument. This is the raw data from our Department of Corrections. They project a need for an enormous growth in the contract bed. So this dotted line is what the Department of Corrections projects the prison growth to be. They base that projection largely on that change in drunk driving laws. This blue line is simply what, what I, I just took the average growth per month and I extended it into the future. Inmate 501 is somewhere you know, right around here, I think this spring, the spring of 2018. 